<laughs> back to jail, bing, bang, boom. What's up, posers and posettes? It's Brendan Sagalow, professional skateboarder. Yeah, that's right. I said professional skateboarder because I finally got my first sponsor, the YKWD podcast hosted by comedian Robert Kelly. After my first sponsor me tape, Bobby had left a comment on my Instagram post with interest in sponsoring me. And after months of not knowing if he was serious or not, we finally made it work. There were some negotiations on how much I was going to get paid, but let's just say we came to a deal that made us both really happy. Well, after a couple of back and forths, the guys at the YKWD podcast asked me to make another sponsor me tape so we can get more people on board. And on top of all that, they gave me some sick merch. So let's go out, let's head to the skate park, and let's give them their money's worth. <laughs> So, unfortunately, the skate park is closed due to unforeseen circumstances. But that don't matter. You don't need a skate park to make a cool skate video. Bam Margera beat up his dad for a whole video. I would do that too, but my dad passed. So that's the end of the tape, everybody. I'd like to thank my first sponsor, the YKWD Podcast. If you'd also like to jump on board and sponsor me, I'll make a tape just for you. Just email right here. And remember, everybody, rules suck, and I don't understand politics. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude? Live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started a social media and podcast. Back. <laughs> the back. YKWD podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all, I YKWD. 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 This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're no. ruining this. Where's the bandana, man? Sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. Yeah! We're starting the show! Woo. So good to be here tonight. I mean, wow. is, it, is it glitching? I mean, I didn't even hear the song. It came in and out five or six times. <laughs> is that me? Or was that, was that just Matt? Is that my internet? I heard it. That was I heard it, unfortunately. The whole song. No, the glitchy portions. Judging by Mike's frozen face, <laughs> I think it was on his end. Yeah, I think that, I think the evidence is kind of right before us right here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, he's frozen in kind there of fun, fun pop art. Why are you mad, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good show, I think. I'm getting, you know, if we get it out of the way early, then the rest of it's going to be. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anything in that case? Oh, there might be one in there. Uh oh. What in the world is going on? There's another. There's another thing at the bottom, bro. Very bottom. We're we're streaming. We're live right now. Yeah, we're live right now. Yeah, we're live. I'm calling your phone. <laughs> My phone? 
What what are you doing, Mike? Yeah, Cal, to sing us a song. Fucking on the thing. So I'm calling your phone. What? Yeah, but you but we're not producing the show because something's happening and you're not communicating why you're fucking glitching the the, the sen- Okay, so why don't you not do it? I'll do it. How's that? I'll do it. What just happened? <sighs> Take over. Drama, drama. Sing it, Kalta. Drama. Right. I guess it's just you and I now. Kalta and Gabby show. Hi, guys. Oh, Welcome to the Kalta and Gabby show. Where anything can happen. We talk about so much. Being in Florida, being in Brooklyn, being two different people, having kids, not I having kids. This is the show I always wanted to do anyway. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? Anybody sick that you know? I got, um, no, but I got tested for Corona. Yesterday. You did? They go up your nose? They go so far up the nose, they stab you in the fucking brain. Eesh. You cry so much. And, and you, then, do they have results yet? No, I find out in a couple of days. So I had the flu one time, like a regular flu. And uh-huh. I went into the doctor's office and the nurse came in and she shoved that thing. She shoved what felt like a toilet brush up my nose. And she rooted, rooted around my nose and tears are coming out. My leg was shaking like a dog when you rub its belly. Then she pulled it out and I was like, Jesus Christ. I go, I would rather take a needle in the eye. And she goes, I got to do the other one too. I go, all right, do what you got to do. So I did that one. Same thing, rotor rooter up there. I was like, holy fuck. I'm like, this is the worst torture ever. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Yeah. She puts them down on the counter and she went to grab them and she knocked them off the counter onto the floor and she goes, I have to do it again. I was like, you motherfuckers. I know she did it on purpose. She truly was torturing you. Yeah. Yeah. She liked it. So I don't understand why when they shove it so fucking far into your skull, why it burns. Because I mean, it's so far up in your membranes, in your nerves, all the nerves that are up there. Horrific. It was horrific. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be tested. Thank God I have no symptoms at all. So, so your dad had it. Your yeah. dad's all good now. I saw him on the video I made yesterday. All good now. Good. They both got tested negative. They're not sick anymore. They drank tequila till 3 a.m. the other Jeez. night. I was now, like, who you say they, who you mean they. Well, the fun thing about them is that they gave Corona. My dad gave Corona to all of their friends and their hairdressers. So they all hang out. So now they're all negative and they're like, I guess we could drink in the basement. Can, do we know if you can not get it again once you had it? We don't know for sure, but our doctor says that it's very Probably. unlikely. Okay. Now, uh, your dad, I remember one time your dad was down here in Tampa and I hung out with him and his neighbors and they were a lot of fucking fun. Yeah. I don't remember. Do you remember what they looked like? It was, uh, they were white. Uh, it was, I can't remember. I want to, I want to say I I could be wrong because I know, I think you said that he, he's told me that his neighbor was a doctor, but I think the guy was a doctor. Was he really short? No, I don't fucking remember. There was, there was a couple of them. There was like, there was a couple of big guys with good looking wives, but they were all older. Sure. And they were all rich. We have this pack of New Jersey people that scale all the way from like, you know, broke musicians who have been in the scene forever and then big fucking guidos with blonde wives with long nails. Yeah, yeah. they weren't kind of guidos. They're more like down the shore type people. Right, right. Yeah, they were like Jimmy Buffett loving people. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. sure. And so, but they the were a lot of fun. Yeah, there's the wasps too. <laughs> yeah, they were good. And then, uh, and you must have been a little baby at the time. Just uh, a little sparkling. Yeah, baby. which makes me feel incredibly old, but that's all right. Let me get him in here because he's ready. Bobby. Yep. <laughs> My dad's ready. Should I add him? Huh? Yeah, let him in. Let him in. Let him okay, in. Okay, hold on. I could have done the whole interview. I'm done with Mike. <laughs> me too. Fuck We're him. Not friends anymore. Oh. Oh. Let's get. Let's do the show and then. Okay, it's sent. What? So, um, yeah, I'm dying to know what just went down. Well, he's fucking, I don't know. He he is a little mushy. 
uh, no, it, 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 he tries to get mad at you for before you get mad at him. You know what I mean? Yes. He tries to. Uh, and it's like just to use your words. Just what's going on? What are you doing? That's all. What the fuck's going on? And then he starts getting mad. Just, just start the show. Who cares? So is he off? Can we talk shit about him? Um, no, he can't be off because he started the fucking thing. I'm kidding. This will all work out. Oh, it always does. It will I work. Th- I have to re-change my name. To what? I changed it to I hate with an arrow to my left, but now it's facing Gabby. It was from Mushy. Change it. Okay, he's coming in. He's coming in. Oh, well, are you nervous? I got Am I nervous? Really drunk on red wine with him last night. Was he drunk? Oh, yeah. You. Whoa! Your- no video. It's push- That's so funny. You have to tell him how to push the... Go to the bottom left and click show video. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Guys, it could have been a doctor, genius, keyboard, oh! uh, musician. Look at this guy. No, I've been on, I, I've been doing it on my iPad. And now I did it on the computer because it's better better lighting for you. Look at that lighting in the back. Look, that's so rock and roll. You're glowing. My studio. Oh, look at that shit. All right, now I want to know what hits were made in those studios. Come on. Uh, a lot of weed hits. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for David Bryan, Gabby's dad. More importantly, but more importantly to most of us. Uh, I mean, in Bon Jovi, one of the original members. And recently, uh, he, well, not recently, but he's been a Broadway producer for a long time. And his play was just about to open, did all the press, did everything uh, for Broadway your composer, a composer, everything uh, for Diana, right? Yeah, we had nine previews. We were in front of the audience for nine days until they shut us down. <sighs> That's crazy. I was going to go. And then and she told me, don't go. Wait till it opens to go. And I wanted to go. I would have saw it in so preview. Well, that you will see it again, my friend. You will see it again. It wouldn't have helped anybody. Nobody is listening to you for Broadway advice. <laughs> uh, dude, you're, you're out of your mind. Michael, I have a lot of gay friends that actually come to me. <laughs> Name three. Name three. Uh, yeah, Michael, and- Michael, Jared, and Jim. <laughs> Okay, Jim doesn't count. Name another. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Rich Moss. Yeah. That counts. Rich was supposed to be here. He's not here. But well, you can also add, uh, I'm also a COVID-19 survivor. Yes. Oh, my God. How scary is that? I got to tell you, it was last. So uh, I did a good thing. I'm a giver, not a taker. So I gave uh, six, my wife and five other friends uh, COVID-19. <laughs> I, and, th- I um, thought you were going to say you just gave money to like a hospital or something. <laughs> no, no, I, you I gave COVID. <laughs> you, you, you almost killed people. You, you murdered people. Okay. Well, I, so out of the out of the seven people, right, no. just me and my buddy Manzo got it. We got sick. Everybody else got COVID. So I said, we all got tested. Nobody had symptoms except for me and my buddy Manzo. Right. So then we just tested both of us negative on Sunday. Right. So I said, let's have a COVID party because we can't give it to each other. So he came to my house. Right. We uh, I hadn't been I hadn't been drunk or had a drink in five weeks, which the last time I was 15, I think, when that event (laughs) occurred. (laughs) And we um, and we drank till like three in the morning and we're like sitting there going, you realize now there's seven billion humans in the planet. Everybody's (laughs) afraid of getting this thing. And like us three, we survived this. It's crazy. Well, you know what's scary, though, is that I would read the – I'm in Tampa, and I would read the Daily News online every day, and front page would show at least, like, three to five famous or rich people that died. That never happens. It's always just regular people, but, I mean, at the same time, there'd be a musician, uh, somebody this, a doctor, all oh, dying. Wow. We all freaked out when Tom Hanks got it. That's yeah. when it became real for fucking everybody. Tom Hanks' his wife got it. We were like, oh, we're, this is this is fucked. You know oh, yeah. what I mean? And then when you got it, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Now it's now it's getting fucking heavy. I know. And, you know, it shows like, I mean, look at the range. Like some people like my wife had it with no symptoms. I had it. I'm sick. But I, I mean, I was sick for five weeks. And I mean, it wasn't 
it wasn't enjoyable. And but then some people are in the hospital fighting for their lives. and People have died. It's crazy. Did you wake up during when you were your sickest? Did you wake uh, up during the middle of it? And Gabby was trying to get you to sign a piece of paper. <laughs> I was like, sign oh. everything over to me. Sign everything. Well, really quick. Don't think about it. Oh, you look so bad. Just sign this really quick. It's a, it's a deed for go, all your whole life to me. I, I said I'm, my eyes were blurry, but I saw POA, power of attorney. <laughs> <laughs> uh dude so are you are you uh any at your age and you're as much as you've been around the world are you relieved that you're not touring right now you know what uh i mean well if it wasn't a pandemic we you know i would be broadway would be my show would have opened up we would be in rehearsals we would be touring arenas so you know uh it, uh, short of i i didn't see a pandemic coming no uh, you're not you're not sick of of touring no, I love to play. I mean, I, I love to perform. It's fun. Sick of touring. How would you be You're asking, are you sick of being on stage with a bunch of women throwing their bras and fucking making millions of dollars? Having Does that people even happen anymore? Back and call all fucking day and just, you know, jamming on a... What are you, fucking nuts? He doesn't... It's not like he's, a, he's doing roofing. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Private planes and, you know, staying in the best hotels. And yes, they do throw... Now, the, the ones we have in the front row are... Uh, they're, uh, they, they, their bras are more brought to you by science. You know, it's more about, about like their, back braces, their plastic, their plastic surgeons. So you can make a, more you can like make a sling. A, you can make a raft out of them by strapping <laughs> logs together. If you're that's where the COVID mask is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you got, you don't understand the trickle down effect that you guys have had for radio guys. There are things that Gabby, close your ears. There's things that benefited us by giving away tickets to see you. So thank you for that. Yeah. What? Pussy? What? How do you know that word? <laughs> <laughs> I think the best ever was, you know, talking about trickle down theory. I was once doing a, a interview, like we were in a studio and, and people were there and we played like a couple songs for radio station. Yeah. I don't remember, somewhere in the United States, somewhere. And some some fan goes, hey, listen, he goes, I just I, I he goes, it's not really a question. I just want to say thank you. He goes, I got laid so many times because I told him I was your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, you owe me a hundred bucks right now. Give me a hundred dollars. A hundred? That's cheap. I got you got off easy. Yeah, it's real cheap. I uh yeah. go sorry, ahead. go ahead, Mike. Go, you got we're, me and Mike were all whipped up to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I well I gotta tell you, and uh I'm I grew up in Staten Island. I'm a I'm a huge fan. I'm I'm probably one of the rare guys that you see, especially now I'm forty eight years old, that's such a huge fan. I was at the first giant stadium show. I was at subsequent Giant Stadium shows. It was so weird. I saw you in June of, of um, 89 at Giant Stadium, first time you guys played there. Yeah. I was here, and you were here, these tiny little guys. That's how shitty my seats were. And then I moved to Florida, and then in September of 89, just a few months later, I saw you at a place called the Lakeland Civic Center that held 8,000 people. And I was like, how the fuck is this even possible? I was I was two people away. I was like, this is the most amazing thing in the world. I was like, was that was 89. It was the year I graduated high school. It was like the Dad, best. Do you remember 89? <laughs> Me? I'm yeah. kind of hazy from like 83 <laughs> to 90. It's kind of hazy. But that first Giant Stadium show has got to be a big deal for you. Oh, that was unbelievable. And we had the big catwalk that walked all the way around. You know, John did. I I'm, yeah. I just pay for that shit. I don't get to use it because I <laughs> have to be at my keyboard, you know? It was, it was you guys, <laughs> Billy Squire. Yeah. Uh, the two guys from Def Leppard showed up and jammed with you guys at the end. Uh, it was the when the big fight happened with Sam Kinison and, and Howard Stern. I mean, it was a big fucking deal. That show was great, man. It was great. He, he, uh, he introduced us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of, you know, and he of was course, a good we, friend of mine. He's, that's the reason. He was a good friend of mine. And, and now, can I ask you this theory? Um, I've had Skid Row. I've done gigs with Skid Row and with Sebastian Bach, and I – I'm positive that Sebastian Bach must be the worst human being in the world because Skid Row would rather be fucking poor than reunite and go out on tour with him. Every other band would, was like, well, fuck it. We need the money. Let's go. Let's reunite with that asshole and go on tour. Except Skid Row. They're like, fuck it. We'd rather be poor. You know, bands are uh, every band is a unique situation, I would like to say, you know. Okay. So it's you know, it's it's usually usually things like that is all about the money. Yeah. I mean, unless you look at the Eagles and but even the Eagles, like they said, I mean, the, when hell freezes over to her, they were like, I hate you so much. <laughs> Fuck the money. I just hate you. And I'm not going to play till hell freezes over. And then they all look and go, how much money we're going to make? Uh, OK, great. 
Well, I, I, I would actually do. I do Torgasm too if the money was right right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always, I always maintain, and I don't expect you to say anything, but uh, that the whole situation with Richie was, in fact, over money. That was the the big rumor that there were everybody had good relationships, but at the end of the day, it became about money. No, that's no, not at all. I mean, really? it's it's a shame. He's my brother. It's just addiction sucks, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Uh, can, speaking of addiction, you're one of those guys. Now I'm a recovering uh, alcoholic addict for 35 years, right? Right. And I've hung out with you a, a few times, and I've never met somebody who can put down booze and have it not affect them one bit. Like you're the same guy at seven as you are as two. Either you're coming in fucked up <laughs> or hey, uh, uh, you're, I mean, I've never met anybody like you. Like you don't, you don't change at all. No, I mean, you maybe get a little more giddy or whatever, but you really, you're not, you can drink too, man. You can fucking drink like a, like an iron worker. Hey, you know, it's uh I'm lucky in the fact, I mean, like so many people, are, I'm just, uh, are, are, you know, didn't make it. Some people, you know, so many people just died from drugs and alcohol. And I, I thrive. <laughs> I think it's the big thing, you know. And, uh, and I, I just always, I didn't do enough to kill myself. I always had fun. I didn't do it to bury emotions or, you know, nobody raped me when I was a kid or any kind of weird shit. Oh, and I just, like, I just kind of just have fun. Yeah. You, you I, told, really I told Gabby, um, I smoked pot with you in Tampa and I don't smoke pot, but you, we went up to your room after a show and, uh, Tampa and, and you, you were like, come on, let's go smoke pot. And I was like, well, I'm not, not going to smoke pot with fucking David Bryan. I was like, I got to do it. It was still, it goes down as one of the best memorable experiences. I, I think nine of his friends have Corona. <laughs> i know there's more to that story by the way too but anyways um there's no there's no way you went up to his room after a concert smoked pot what'd you do talk about fucking politics no we i, I was telling gabby when you were uh, fighting with mike before you were in tampa with a bunch of your neighbors from jersey yeah and, and uh they were all hanging out down here and we went up to the room smoked pot it was me you David Wells and some other guy, and then we went back down and hung out back out in the lobby. It was great. I did, and I, I couldn't believe after being such a hardcore queer fan for so long, how fucking cool everybody was. Yes. Not John, but the rest of you guys were all so super cool. And I hung out and sat with Tico and with you all night. And I got to know your neighbors. I was like, this is fucking great. You can't say quit in front of Gabby. Gabby's woke. What'd you say? Oh, I didn't mean uh, homosexual. I just meant weird queer. <laughs> now, let me ask you something, Dave. Does it bother you that you have such a woke daughter? Be careful what you say. <laughs> That's woke to even say that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I, I, I'm steer, I steer her away from the wokeness. It's good. Da <laughs> let me help you, okay? okay. I'm well, you'll grow out of the it. reason I'm here is to be like, don't say, don't say that. I learned words like like lit. I thought, you know, it was a whole different thing. I'm learning like new kind of words. I like I can't say retard anymore. Nope. <laughs> can't say that one. Yeah. Nope. The one you'll always be able to say is midget. You can't say yeah. midget. Yeah, you can say it because what are they going to do? There's oh, nothing they can do to stop you. Did you ever see when they attacked the guy and tied his hair to the ground? <laughs> no. They can do a lot. That hair is part of the is part of the career. No hair touching. Don't say midget. I know. No, I, I don't. Uh, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> All right, so let, let me let me ask you about that. Let's can we talk about the hair. You were. Okay. I'm, I've heard you comment on it before. You were like, I got Jew Jersey hair, and uh, and you know it's hard to be in a fucking hair band when you didn't have the right hair. But eventually, you got it to where it needed to be. Yeah, you know it's. I, I am. I, I'm a Jew, so it's it's a Jew fro that started up here in like '84, and I just haven't cut it since. So this is it. You know what I mean? This is 58 years of growing it. Hilarious. Bobby, yeah. does that I make mean, you emotional? I His hair is, let me tell you something about his hair. It's it's just magical. It's just magical. His hair, <laughs> if I can find a, uh, here it is right here. Yeah. I there mean, were years when you were in Thundercats. That it oh, was very yeah. Thunder, Thundercat is my favorite. This is my favorite. Right there. Yeah. Thundercats. So oh. <laughs> So many different things are happening. Oh, there's a lot. Look at that one right there. Look at it. 
You got oh, yeah. to tell the story of when you got extensions. Well, no, that's uh, when I had the, the hair in the uh, slippery and wet, that gigantic one. I, we were in Vancouver and I saw this chick walking down the, 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 the block. She was on the other side of the street. And I'm like, and she looked like an alien Martian. And I was like, I need to do that. <laughs> and I got it. I got all these extensions, but like, you know, that was a slippery and wet tour. So I had all these extensions. And I, I went in there and I sort of had, you know, like shorter hair. I came out of there and it was like down to my ankles. I looked like Cro Magnum Man. I was like, I go, don't cut it yet. Let me just scare the crap out of my band. <laughs> and I walked into rehearsal. They looked at me like I was like, you know, Planet of the Apes or something. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> now, John's hair uh, and slippery when wet. I mean, you can't, I mean, it's fucking gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. That's why I, my hair wasn't like that. So I had to get the shit to put it in there just so I can get that. <laughs> I've always felt that way too. When I was younger, uh, punk rock. Remember the the uh, the the straight in the back and spiked the spiked hair was in, and you popped the collar, the eyes on, and you ironed it up, and you pinned the legs on your jeans, so you made them. And I tried to do the hair, but my head cowlicks, so it would always like my bangs were always crooked, and I could never get the spike right. And I was, I used to walk, like, I used to go out at night. It'd be for like a half hour. It'd be good. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, like half the spikes would come down. The cowlick would kick in. I just look like an asshole. <laughs> See, that's where you needed what we had. The, the secret of that was Aquanet. You spray that shit. That's, we were uh, probably the eighties responsible for the hole in the ozone. You could spray posters to the wall with that shit. It was like, you spray that on. It's not a hair. It becomes a helmet. It was an eight pound purple can of Harris. Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah, it was fantastic. Say it, say it again. What's the name of that? Aquanet. You, the first time you said it, you sound like an old Jewish woman. You said Aquanet. <laughs> That's what happens to old rock stars when they get older. Some old Jewish women. What? what? Ah. My name's Bon Jovi. How? No, I don't remember the 80s. <laughs> Why would I remember that? <laughs> how, old, how old was Gabby? when she realized that you were cool. I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm, I, I think it's gonna happen at 30. My son is 13 and he doesn't quite, like I think this year, now that we have buck season tickets and that kind of shit, he's like, all right, there's an aspect to him that's cool. But I mean, you guys are, I mean, you're on TV, you're around the world, the news, I mean, every magazine cover when you go in the store, that's gotta be amazing when you're a kid. I'll tell you what, it was, uh, I could say like about, uh, Gabby's twin brother, Colton. So he was like, same thing, you know, when they're at a certain age, I mean, he was probably like, not even 13, like 12 maybe. And he's like, you guys, you're old, you're fat, you're bald, you're an old man band. I'm like, I'm not old, I'm not fat and I'm not bald. I go, okay, come on. So we were playing Giant Stadium. I put his seat right behind mine. There's 70,000 people. Right. And he's sitting right behind me on stage looking at it. And I got the ear things in, so I can't really hear him. I turn around. I go, who's fucking cool now? And I turn around <laughs> one, one more time. And he's like, not you. Oh. Yeah, I'm so happy you brought that up because I think that's a perfect reason to write him out of the will. Now, hear <laughs> me out. That's I did, a bad. I did, I did the same thing to my son at a funny bone. And uh, it was it was half full. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he he thinks I'm he uh, he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, you're not cool. <laughs> I brought my kid out. Honest to God, though, I brought my kid out at Just for Laughs. Max came out. He's he's he was five um, or six, whatever. He just turned six, and he came out in front of fifteen hundred people and lost his mind. He literally jumped off the stage and walked through the crowd, high fiving <laughs> like everybody. But like, had, did Gabby? Did Gabby do any of that shit? Did she do any crazy shit? Or did she, would she steer away from the stage? And we were always having like on the side of the stage. You never brought him out though, right? Because that would fuck no. the image. We, da we danced on the stage a couple times. Oh uh, yeah, like once or just something like that. Yeah. I just, I, I didn't want anybody to like ransom him or do anything like that because I didn't want to get money for that. Yeah, you're right. There's a big difference between me and you. I <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I could literally show my son. I could. He could be on stage with me. Nobody's gonna. Nobody's gonna. <laughs> some some chubby guy from Ohio. You want your son back? Yeah. <laughs> Got a red robin with me right now. <laughs> um, can I ask you some questions that are not appropriate to ask in front of your daughter? Yes. That's where yeah. you don't understand. We're way far gone from that. I still have to ask. I still have to be polite. Yeah. Ask. 
So um, I interviewed John one time and John said, I said, I got to imagine that in all the countries you've been to and all the crazy shit, t- tell me there's got to be a mother daughter team in there somewhere. And John had the best answer ever. He goes once or twice. <laughs> uh, I, what, what, what country had the best Bon Jovi chick fans? I think planet earth. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what about like Japan? Oh, you guys love Tokyo and that, you know, doing the album in Canada. I mean, what was the best, what was the best, like what place did you get excited about going to? And then I, I, in the eighties, everybody was tied for first place. You know yeah. what I mean? It was uh, pretty damn good. From a kid from Edison, New Jersey, you know, in high school who couldn't even get laid. So I was like, uh, it was got to do it. So it's, um, <laughs> it was, it was, a good, it was a good time. How come nobody, how come you see, I always ask who your best friend is. Maybe it's this Manzo guy. I don't know, but how, how come nobody stopped you the first time you were wanting to get married and said, don't fucking do that. You're in Bon Jovi. I waited till I was, uh, you know, 32, 30. Then I had my kids when I was 32. I figured by then, you know, back then 32 was was like 52. You know, now 32 is like 10. Yeah, you had how many years of how many years of clanging and banging did you have? What's clanging? You know, clanging. None of your business. Clanging and banging. You know what I mean? I would say I reached the end of the internet. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you was you start? When did when did you start touring? When did you you run away? You joined the band, right? How did you no. go? No, it started in, uh, so John and I started when we were 17. I joined his cover band. Yeah. And then we got signed in 83 and then put the band together. So in 83, we recorded Runaway and then put it out in 84. So I was 21 when we recorded it and 22 when I left my house and I came back, uh, that was 84. I came back six years later. I was like... It, it was really, really, it was a lot of fun. I came back, I weighed like a pound, and I slept for 10 seconds. You weighed a pound, <laughs> and the balls were empty for eight months. <laughs> <laughs> Earmuffs, Gabby. <laughs> that now, much been did they really, on, on Slippery and Wet, I always wonder, because they do the, you know, they do the, all these, you know, interviews, and they say that he, he grabbed a trash bag, sprayed it with water, and wrote Slippery When Wet on it, and that was the cover. Is that a true story? It's actually, is, you know why it's a true story is because we had, there was another version, the Japanese version of a chick with big tits. Right. And it said slippery and wet, but then that was the mad mothers against mad people, drunk driving, everything, whatever that was, the tipper gore. And uh, so the record company was like, we can't put that at, you know, Walmart or whatever was the thing then. And so uh, in the 11th hour, John just, he did that, took a glad bag, sprayed on, he wrote slippery and wet. Took a picture of it, and that was the album cover. Which and then caused me to pay sixty nine dollars to get the Japanese import to have the old cover. So yeah, you have. Yeah, I, de- I definitely paid for half that house. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Enjoy college. <laughs> she didn't go. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, was there ever a time where you thought, "I'm done"? I'm like when you started having success in Broadway, where you're like, "I, I think this is it now." You know, I just, I mean, they're definitely two different worlds, you know, like in Broadway. I mean, in Bon Jovi, I get to play live. There's nothing like the excitement going up there. And everybody's like, you know, good luck, but you don't need it. Like, no, listen, you always have the opportunity to suck. You just fucking work when your brain and you, you know, you practice and you work hard. And then I I love it's like a sporting event. Like you just play the, it's like the Super Bowl, but nobody hits you and you win every time. But um. But, you know, you try and try your hardest. And I love that part about it. And then Broadway world, it's writing and then getting these actors who aren't used to rock and like get them to sing. I can sing. I sing from like, oh, that's how you sing. I go that, that way. I go, yes, that's how you sing this way. So I get to do that. So it's really exciting. But I would never give up playing. I, like I said, I stand up playing keyboards and eventually I'll just sit the fuck down. Like, you know, when I'm old enough. <laughs> uh, I, I love that you. uh that you had a great relationship with your father and that they got to see you become so super successful. Oh yeah. It's pretty, it's unbelievable. You know, his whole, he always supported me. He was a trumpet player and uh, a failed trumpet player. And he always supported me. And it was like such a wild thing to see like that little fucking that kid. But I was the kid at seven years old when I, I auditioned for this classical piano player for, for lessons. 
And I was playing, I never played less than three hours a day when I was seven. And then I'm getting into Juilliard. I ramped it up to eight to 14 hours. My parents were like, can, can you can you just stop? Like, we want to sleep. I'm like, no, I can't stop. I have to get into it. It doesn't happen by luck. I want to say something, Dave. And, I, and don't take offense. Me? <laughs> yes. Your name's David. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say this. You've pulled off a very hard thing to pull off because the keyboard player... I mean, is I mean, never really cool. I mean, always gets the shit, and it's like, and I mean, in the band, it's like, what are you, the keyboard player? You know, it's like, you know, you're the guitarist, you're the lead, you're the keyboard player. I'm not the fucking keyboard, but you, and I have to say this, have always pulled off cool keyboard player. Like you've, I've always thought you were like a main part of the band, and I always look for you in the videos, you know, and I'm always trying to see what the fuck you're doing. And when I saw you live, and I saw you three times, I thought you were fucking great. You weren't just, you know, you weren't, you were, you were rocking out, having a good time. You know what I mean? It's like the lead singer always takes that light when they walk. I saw Pearl Jam. I didn't know anybody else was in the fucking band when any vetter walks out and just looks up and even though, and then just looks at that side and does that shit. I just forgot. I just stared at him the whole show. But like, like when you see crew, I saw them. I stare at fucking Tommy, just fucking wow, bow, bow, bow. You know, I just spilled coffee on everything. Um, but you, like the whole band, I really enjoy. Like everybody in it, and in the keyboard player, that's a hard one to pull off, dude. I mean, you're fucking exciting to watch. Is that gay to say? Thank you. No, listen, most that that uh, most keyboard players are weenies. You know, like uh, yes. just total weenies. And I was like, you know, there's like, you know. Uh, Look at the guitar player. looks cool. That's why I didn't sit down. That's why I stand up and play with my hands apart, you know? And I'm like, you know, it's like anything you get chicks back then, you know? So you got to look cool. You can't look like a weenie. Yeah, like the key, like sticks. Ugh, you know, come on. Dee -dee -dee -dee. That guy, he was a fucking weenie. Eddie, I think Eddie pulled it off a little bit. But even when yeah. Tommy played the keyboard, I was like, sit down, play the drums, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, yeah. Ellie and Aerosmith doesn't even let their keyboard player go on stage. They have a keyboard player? Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, exactly. They're like the listen. The keyboard players are like the Rodney Dangerfield of rock. You know, there's no respect. No. Right, but you're you because you did those 14 hours, 15 hours a day, that paid off because you're part of the you're part of everything. Yeah, and it's and and that was our whole thing. You know, it's like we all came at you. You know, right at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, our first tour, I'll, I'll never forget it. We opened up for Judas Priest. Yeah. Right. So our first tour. We go up to open up for Judas Priest and, you know, they're like, kill your fucking mom, kill your fucking mom. And we're going, ooh, she's a little runaway. Right. So, <laughs> you know, it's all 16 year old black T-shirt wearing. Yeah, but hating. They fucking hated us. Right? Yeah, but you, you find out later when you listen to the songs, it's like, suck his fucking dick, suck his fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Then you're like, well, I knew backstage, you know, he's like he would like uh he was a nasty little bastard, and he would like have his like sixteen year old little blonde with him boy that they picked up, and he was like, you know, elbowing you out of the way. I'm like, oh, the fucking king of darkness over there. I don't know what kind of darkness. <laughs> was. You ever have you ever got the <laughs> king of darkness? Did you ever get Did you ever get into a fight with bands? Have you ever fought like as a as a a band against another band? Molly Crew. Yeah, well, my, we had the same manager. So we never, Doc McGee was our manager. And the only one time that they ever put us together, because he would always keep us apart, because that was a very smart thing to do. And um, we, it was in Germany. I'll never forget. And then we, it was like, for the first time, okay, he's like, you guys are together now. You got to act, you know, you got to behave. We're like, absolutely. So we all went to the bar. We looked at each other. We got a shot, tequila. Everybody did it. And we threw it right at the back of the fucking bar. Broke the whole fucking everything. Our road, road manager's like, no, no, calm down. Here's 10 grand. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, we won't do it again. Bang, did it again. Threw it again. And then uh, and then the greatest thing, because Tico at the time was, now Tico's been sober forever, but a raging alcoholic. He was wonderful. Mm. And um, <laughs> he, he he's drinking. There's like six beers like that he had. And that was just to start off before he had the 27 bottles of Jack. And uh, so... He's got six empty beers and he goes right over to Tommy Lee and he goes, bang, hits him right over the fucking head. 
I think Tommy's like, dude, and he's bleeding, you know? And then Tico looks at him and goes, fuck you, you fucking pussy. And he, 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 he has another body, goes bang, and breaks it over his own head. Bang, breaks another one over his head. Bang, breaks another one over his head. Bang, breaks another one over his head. And Tommy looking at him and goes, I'm not fucking with you. This guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> and Tico says to me afterwards, I go, how the fuck do you do it? He goes, it's a trick. <laughs> I go, yeah, the trick is to fucking drink a bottle of fucking Jack for 30 years a second. I go, what? you're out of your mind. <laughs> Talk about all the pranking that you and Tico do to each other. Uh, Tico is the he's the worst. Well, the the worst thing was that I so at the beginning we didn't have our uh, any you know we always doubled up so everybody got I slept with Tico I mean I didn't sleep with Tico Tico <laughs> and I had rooms together. I would have slept then, with John if I had a choice. Uh, no, no, he had his own. He's the lead singer, so you know LSD, so he has his own room. Right. And then Richie and Alec slept together in their room. So, and then Tico was a raging alcoholic and Alec was a speed freak. So Alec would never sleep. So the first night, first night, I will never forget this first night staying at the triple a motel in Poughkeepsie, you know, like where it all goes down. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's, we played this club. There's no chicks. Didn't, you know, I, I usually like chicks with teeth. So I was like, um, I'm going to just go back to my room. Go back to my room, sleep naked. I always do. Go under the covers. At about like four in the morning, all of a sudden, bang, the radio comes on. There's 700 people in our room. <laughs> right? 700 people. Right? They're sitting on a bed, fucking smoking. Ashes are going. My suitcase. Right? I'm like, T. I go, uh, I wasn't sleeping. Right? I don't want to bother you. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and then he did that uh, for three years every day. <laughs> And at one point I go, don't, don't you take time off? He goes, no. <laughs> and then I said, well, if you can't beat him, join him. And I went, I'm going to die. <laughs> I fucking actually die. So I was like, so I would drag my mattress across the fucking hall to Richie's room because Alec was, uh, uh, he was out because he would be up, you know, he slept one day out of a week. So I would just <laughs> go to his room. We would just get fucked up and go to sleep. That's so weird. That What's sounds your- like a fucking blast, dude. I, I, I remember. I mean, comedy is kind of parallel to that shit on such a smaller scale, but I remember doing some fucking crazy, fucked up shit. I remember just looking at like being with comic friends, being like, "Dude, what the fuck? Did you ever get that way where you're like, dude, what the fuck are we doing right now?" I think the best that brought the best one. I'm, I'm a little hazy, so things come out of here. I remember at one point I said to John, I go, don't even pay me. Just give me a room. Don't pay me. I go, you all run to your rooms. I run to my room, and then he comes to my room. <laughs> so one time I remember the bus was parked out in the, in the parking lot of the hotel. You know, the, you know, we were Motel 6. You know, we were shitty places. And then we – so the deal was you got to get the bus. Whoever got to the bus first with a chick – you know, you ran the generator. So when you heard the generator going, somebody had the bus. Yeah. So it was, you know, first come, first serve thing. And we, I remember looking out there and there was a wheelchair in front of the door. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Alec, our bass player, was in there. I'm like, he's going to heaven. I thought you guys went straight to heaven. <laughs> yeah, what was that like? Was she like on the bunk. She was grabbing on the bunk, you know, and you're. Uh, that'd be funny if he healed her. <laughs> she comes out skipping. Yeah, she comes uh, out walking. <laughs> was, that, was that weird or cool to play with him at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? It was great to play with him. Yeah, I missed him. He was Al was a. We had a lot of fun with him. He just did too much uh, too much speed at the time. But he's and and booze and he went to rehab twice and didn't work out. But he like got himself sober and he was great. Can I can I tell you a weird thing that I heard about him and you can confirm or deny or whatever uh did his end in the band have something to do with him secretly taping conversations he got uh he got very strange toward the end yes he 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 fell in love with uh electronics so he would bug everybody he would he would bug the fucking maids when they came in then he got a thing where you could shock the door handle so when the maids would come in they would fucking pass out and they would film them he was uh he was TikTok like, before it was cool. The past seven years of uh of uh, limitations, so they can't sue him anymore. Somebody somebody told me that, and I was like, oh, I don't. I heard it wasn't you know that good of a player anymore. Whatever the deal was, 
And then years later, some another musician was like, hey, you know, I had a meeting with last week, the dude from Bon Jovi, Alec, Alec John Such. And I was like, oh, really? He goes, yeah, what a weird fucking dude. He had this thing. And I, he goes, it was a spy camera. And I was like, holy shit, I had heard that about him. So I didn't never knew if that was true or not. Oh, yeah. And then I would do, uh, I think I was telling Bobby when I was in your shed, then I would do stuff like, to him, I'm like, okay, you know what? I just want to, like, and he would do biker crank, you know, like, I mean, now they call it crystal meth, you know, I had a much better deal called when it was biker it crank. It was next to me. Yeah, like black beauties, you know, and then snort those things, and then you're up for a week. And uh, and I was like, you know, what a waste of time to sleep eight hours, you know? What, what does this guy do? So I would ride with him and just do it, stay up just to see what the fucking guy would do. The amount of shit that we did we were like in 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 switzerland we're in a, we rented a boat i'm fucking water skiing with them he, he can't you know i mean the sh- he couldn't even fucking get up on the skis like there was a rooster coming off his nose you know he almost drowned i'm like get in the boat you'll be fine and like we did like 800 things and it was like nine o'clock in the morning you know we already did it <laughs> That's awesome. What fucking lives, man. That must have been such a great your twenties must have been fantastic. I wanna know I wanna know this, Dave. I, I wanna know because I have uh, again on a smaller scale, I don't need to keep saying that because everybody gets that I'm not you. I'm not even in your fucking stratosphere. I have a three bedroom ranch in Westchester. Listen, but the thing is, like I've bought a I have a ton of shit. I've gotten a ton of free shit. I've gotten all this stuff. What is the thing that you bought? that is still around like what do you do with all the shit that you get like do you just throw it away do you give it away do you donate it like and what's the craziest thing you've ever got like for just being you the coolest thing i ever bought was because i remember from flash dance that maniac maniac, and there was the uh the black porsche yeah so the second i got my first fucking amount of money that i bought i started i still have it I got 20,000 miles on it. I bought it for 40 grand in 1987. Jesus. Wow. I didn't have a house. I didn't live anywhere. I had a, out of a garage. I was like, I'm buying that fucking car first. <laughs> you know how much that fucking Porsche is worth now, though, right? 20,000? 200 grand. Huh? It's worth 200 grand. It's fu- that, I, that's what I wish I could do right now. I wish I had, you know, those people. I saw that video. The guy bought a Rolex for $350 back in the war. Right. He went and he brought it to the, the thing. It was the Daytona. It was like uh, like a very small number run. It's worth a million dollars. Wow. Guy had a beard down to his dick. <laughs> his fucking redneck probably pisses in a hole outside and fa- he fainted. He passed out. Mm-hmm. Three hundred and fifty dollars. A million bucks. Nice. Fucking crazy. I got. Can I have your, I got- I have your uh, hat from Russia? <laughs> Big Babushka hat? Oh, you know, it's actually, no, I still have it. I, I wear that thing. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing, I mean, there, that's a funny story. The two Russian stories are funny. So that one was, um, we went to Russia, which was before the wall came down. They're still the fucking enemy. I mean, we were like in kindergarten, we would hide underneath the desk and they're like, you know, the Russians are going to nuke us. I'm like, what the fuck is this going to do under the desk? I know I'm five, but I think, shouldn't I run home and try to be with the people I love? Like, what the fuck is this? So here we are with the enemy. And as a joke, I brought my American Express card. You know, and I had like a film, like, don't leave home without it. And I went there and they took my American Express card. I'm like, the fucking enemy? That's a good company. They were servicing both sides of the fucking. I, I remember, I, I must have watched that video a thousand times, the, the release of that when you're over there. And I remember you bought the hat with the American Express card. Yeah. I, it- I still had the hat. But I want it in your will. Give it to me in your will, at least. And you and then, have uh, that piece of the wall. I have a piece oh, yeah. of the wall when it came down. But the cool thing, so remember that the Moscow Peace Festival, that leather jacket? Yeah. So, like, I think, like, three, maybe two or three years ago, we had a Halloween party, and I I, I always do it. My wife does the theme. I'm like, just do it where I, I can just dress up like me. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, oh, like your favorite record cover. I'm like, me. You know, like your favorite rock thing, me. So, uh I put that jacket on. I hadn't put it on since fucking 1989. Put it on and I reach into the pocket and there's fucking my $800 in fucking $100 bills. That was my per diem because each bill was 1989. I was like, Funny. Fuck <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> was that a, was that a great experience over there or was it shitty? I mean, it was. The first, it was unbelievable seeing it. Yeah. They, they had fucking nothing. They had no food. They had no water. 
you know, they, like in the hotel, like we had, uh, they gave us eggs. I'm like, I think that fucking chick, this, you know, that chicken fucked a skunk. <laughs> it doesn't smell like a fucking egg. I had a piece of the, I had a piece of the wall too. This girl I was banging back in Boston, she went to Germany and, uh, we were, after we did our thing, we were sitting there and she uh, had a little piece of rock with spray paint on it. And I go, what's that? She goes, a piece of the Berlin Wall. I go, let me get it. And she goes, take it. I took it and I gave it to my grandfather and then he died and then my uncle threw it out. He thought it was just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that him. was crazy. I mean, we actually were there when the wall was, we were doing an interview on the wall. Right. And all of a sudden, the guy's like German interview, 1980, 1990. And all of a sudden, somebody comes over the wall because usually they would shoot him. Right. Guy came over the fucking wall and all of a sudden they were going, they turned off. It's like, next to two people, three people, thousand people, all these fucking people. Mayhem happened. They're like, we were there. And then I'm like, fuck, let's get a piece of the fucking wall. So like some guy, you know, then capitalism happens, you know, some guy selling hammers. So we're like, give me this fucking hammer. So we're you hit the fucking thing. Nothing happened. I mean, it's a wall. You know what I mean? It's like nothing happened. Yeah. So then capitalism happened. Some guy's like, I got wall. I got wall. He's got his box. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. So we bought wall. Like, here's a hundred bucks. We'll buy your whole fucking box. Yeah. And then we divvied it up and I got a piece in my office. It's big. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. My piece was this big. That's big. So yeah. it's an equal to your success. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. What did you just say, Michael? They said the size of the wall is equal to your success. Well, I think, <laughs> that's, I think that's a little fucking below the belt. No, I mean, not, not just you. I mean, whoever had, I don't have one at all. So there you go. Well, yeah, well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> yeah, fuck that asshole. <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you talk to Richie? Relationship good? Or you guys just don't really see each other? Nah, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame. Yeah. It's just a shame. You know, it's that... As Bobby probably would know, it's that tough love. You know what I mean? If you can't, you know, uh, uh, when somebody's drowning, you can't uh, either you hand him the life, you know, you hand him the life vest, but you can't hug him because if you hug him, he's going to take you down. Yeah, yeah. they, they got to want it. You yeah. Know? That's a shame. Yeah. I mean, it's funny, though. But, I mean, look, I saw you guys uh, at the garden when you got me the tickets. Uh, Mike, did I tell you about that? Uh. Max is a huge Bon Jovi fan. Before I knew who Gabby was and who her father was, you know, and uh, I mean, loved him. I mean, the, he used to sit there on the drums and just, I mean, over and over. It's my life. I listened to that song 700 times. Play it again. Play it again. Then we find out, you know, Gabby, I find out that she's hanging out with David Bryan I'm on Instagram. I'm like, why are you hanging out with that guy? That's weird. She's like, it's my dad. And I was like, <laughs> thank God. Um, and then <laughs> Fuck you. I, got, I went to the concert. Gabby gets us like right to the left of the stage. Like you can just walk around. You can sit. I got Max on my shoulders in the middle of the song. He's up there singing. Just, I mean, he knows the words. I'm so fuck. I'm having such a great time. He's got a, a mohawk. He, he wanted it red. And then uh, I smell shit. I'm like, do you shit your pants? He goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit his pants right on my neck. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. I mean, mid concert. I mean, there's no way. I, I go, Gabby. She goes, follow me. She took me into Dave's Dave's dressing room, and I cleaned his ass like a fucking pit crew. I mean, whoop, whoop, skip, skip, zip, zip, and I grabbed it. I rolled it all up in underwear, wrapped it in thing, and put it right in your barrel, David. I, I was just nervous that somebody was going to find kid underwear with shit on it, and David <laughs> ruined his career. <laughs> Not my kid. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I mean, you know, you look at Richard was a major part of the band and uh, it's amazing. You know, we didn't we didn't ever fight dirty. You know what I mean? It just was. And, and I think the fans just looked and said, you know, it's not our fault. And it's, you know, and they look and they because that could have that could have killed us, you know, and it didn't. Thank God, you know, because it's not our fault. I wanted to go to work. I wanted to. I never walked on stage fucked up. You think you're ever going to you think he's ever going to come back? Yeah. I don't know. It's like you said, he's got to wake up one day and say, 
I don't want I don't want to be that guy anymore. Yeah. Does it hurt the band uh, concert wise? Like, do people still come out in droves? Like they, you know, or do you? Oh, that's what I was just saying. It was amazing. We survived it. Oh, it because, all that. Okay. You know, we survived that because we the fans look and said, you know what? It's not your guy's fault. You know, it's it's his fault. Yeah, but it's the prop. The problem is for somebody who's such a longtime fan is to see, you know, I love the I love the whole band, but to see the two of them up there together harmonizing, and that's that's what I was worried that that you would miss. Well, lucky, I, luckily, Phil took. Phil's a great guitar player. Yeah. Phil is sick and entertaining, and and draws your eye and everything too. So that I think that's a big part of it as well. Now, this is a weird thing that you don't, Mike. You don't. I don't know if you know this. And I just recently found out too that Gabby can sing and play piano and and guitar and and I, look at the the worst thing in the world as a musician or anything is to have a kid who wants to do what you do and they just uh, and you have to go to some fucking Asbury Park gig and just sit there in the back. Oh, good job! Oh, boy. you know what I mean? Just have her up there with a guitar and a tambourine, just just stinking the place up, but. Gabby fucking is, she sings great. She's she really good. Sing. I mean, does it bother you that she wants to be a stand up? Like she's doing stand up? Because she could go down, she could go to, Gabby, you could go be a singer and be, yeah. and, and be on fucking Good Morning America tomorrow with your dad. He'd be on the piano. You'd be there singing some COVID song to bring the world together. <laughs> a millionaire. <laughs> I think it's well, I mean, for me, like, you know, you know me and and I, I, I grew up with more comedy records than music records. So I love that she's a comedian. And then her secret weapon is, I mean, look at Cheech and Chong started out as a music group, yeah. you know, and they did funny songs. So she could, you know, do that or, you know, just more in your pocket. But I, I, mean, I love that you, she's a comedian. I think when you grow up, like, and your dad has a certain profession. For me, I didn't want to go down that same route. Like, I knew I wanted to be entertainment in entertainment. I knew I wanted to perform, but I just wanted my own thing. And then that ended up, started in acting and ended up doing comedy without really knowing that he was the biggest comedy fan ever. You know, it kind of it was just this... It just happened perfectly, and he he got up and did stand up with me at my one of my last shows before quarantine. I did fifteen minutes of shtick, really. Yep. And I'll tell you what, I was scared shitless. And <laughs> Gabby's like, you know, she's like, uh, she was she was at a gig and she said something. I saw in the audience, and I never at want to say stand. anything at the, at the stand. stand. And she was doing some bat mitzvah sh uh, shtick, and she's like, I don't remember my theme. I go. The theme was a hundred grand. It cost me a fucking hundred grand. Uh -huh. So the whole place laughs. And she's like, dad, why did you out me? I told everybody, uh, you know, I had it in a shed and it cost five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so afterwards, the comedians, the other ones came up. Hey, that was pretty funny. And Gab's like, hey, we should, you know, you should come do some uh, shtick with me at, at uh, the way station. And I'm like, I don't know, Gab, I, I, I want to start out somewhere small. She goes, there's no smaller. This is the smallest. <laughs> He's You're literally there. he's standing there. He's like, I'm I'm nervous. I don't know if I could get up. I'm like, Dad, there's 35 people in this bar. You, <laughs> oh my you God. played Madison Square Garden two months ago. Yeah. He's like, it's different. It's different. <laughs> and but there was a piano there, so I you know I, I had some comfort. And I was like, I woke up at four in the morning the night before. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? And uh, so then I get on stage. But before I went on, she was doing this comedy song, and I I thought she was saying, and she said a cum smoothie was one of the it was in the bridge that was the bridge a cum smoothie right so i'm like that's uh that's that's nice it's great for a father to hear that and um so uh she that she goes and now uh last she goes okay my dad it's like i come to the stage she goes so how you feeling i go disappointed <laughs> whole place cracks up i go What's with that song? Come smoothly. She goes. It's not smoothly. It's smoothie. Oh, it's worse I got another laugh. I got shtick. My daughter and I better not even know the word come. I don't even hear it. <laughs> and then I told. Then I was like, okay. I I tried my little Jewish thing. I said, you know, okay, Gab. I said, you know, an eighty-year-old Jewish couple, Sadie and Morty are in bed. Sadie gets up, goes to the bathroom, puts on sexy lingerie. He jumps out and yells, "Super pussy!" You know, what Morty says, "I'll take the soup." <laughs> Everybody cracked up. I was like, oh, I got the rule. I was like, that felt just as fucking great as playing Giant Stadium. It's a weird thing. It's it's getting a laugh is supersonic 
uh, acc- accolades. It's 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 getting people to laugh at your shit. Really, a room full of people you don't know is is this fucking jolt shot of adrenaline that you really can't explain. Oh. Mike knows too. You know, Mike's radio guy. Um, number one guy, huge in radio. He came up on stage one night. We're going to do my show in Tampa. And he's like, yo, I think I want to do five minutes in front of you. And I was like, fuck yeah. And we sat in his, you know, because he makes 14 million a year. We sat in his, um, his, what is it called again? Sprinter. Sprinter. He has a Mercedes Sprinter with a driver on hand whenever he wants to go to the supermarket or get a fucking <laughs> pink berry. He has somebody drive him in a Sprinter. But, uh, he, I, he sat there five minutes. He wrote this shit down. In my head, I'm like, dude, this this is either going to go fucking horribly wrong, which is going to be horribly right, because it's going to be awesome, or it's it's going to be he's going to kill. He went up and murdered for five, six minutes, just killed. And and, it is. It's, it's, a different, it's a different adrenaline. I can get up in front of anybody, but when you're up there telling jokes and shit, that's a whole different rush. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I walk up, no problem. I'll play fucking piano and sing in front of a build the, the earth. Yeah. I don't fucking care. But that was, but then after I did that and, and Gabby recorded it and I listened back, I was like, that was some good shit. I did good. You also listened back and you were like, fuck, there was a silence right here. And that would have been better right here. Like, it's like a new comic where he's like, there's a punchline right there. I should have fucking said it. You know what I mean? That's, that's his great. work. That's his 14 hours a day piano shit. He'd apply that to comedy and pass all of us, and yeah. I'd be pissed at him. Then we'd but I said to her, I always wanted to do like a Victor Bort. Like I start before, I said, you know what? I said, listen, when I retire, I'm going to be done. 65 or whatever the fuck I retire, I'm done. And then we'll do like a Victor Borg. You know, I'll play piano and be wacky, and I'll say everything, in, you know, incorrect, and then you could correct me. And she goes, it'll be the retirement tour. And she goes, you know what? I'll be uh, 35 then. She goes, I'll retire too. You know, fuck it. I've had it. <laughs> now, you, now, how did you, this Diana play that you, why did you pick this? Why did you pick her? So my writing collaborator, you don't say partner in that world. I learned that. So my writing collaborator, um, Joe DiPietro, we were working, we did, we, we wrote the musical Memphis together. So I write all the music, he writes the story, and then together we write the lyrics. So we did that, and then we had another one called Chasing the Song, about six years in, and that was ready to go to Broadway. And he said to me, he goes, hey, what, what about writing a musical on Princess Diana? I think my head spun around a million times. I was like, that is the greatest fucking idea. And um, I said, write a treatment for it. Let's see. Let me just read it and see how it is. I read it. It was unbelievable. You learned about this person that was, you know, for me, it was night when she got married. I just like, wow, she's hot. She was hot. You know, and that's not just a blowjob. That's like a royal blowjob. You know, that's like (laughs) that's hot. And um, but I can't say that. I can say it on the comedy channels. And uh, (laughs) and then um, he was like, "Okay, well, let's write a song. And I was like, well, he goes, let's write a song for. And I figured she would be rock. Like she's like rock pop of the 80s. And then I was like, you know, Charles would be like classical with a string quartet. Camilla would be, cause it's a love triangle. And like Camilla is like light FM, you know, acoustic guitar, AC adult. And then the queen is like regal with snare drum. So we wrote, the first song we wrote was for the queen. And I'm like, well, we'll be with a snare drum and this stuff. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm, my studio, I, I, I put a sequencer, I did this thing with a snare drum, wrote it and he's like, that's fucking unbelievable. And then, it's the fastest. I mean, in three years, we're on Broadway. And the the it sucks that you got railroaded here because of the pandemic. Because I saw all the press with the with the Prince and or, or Harry and just the photo shoots and Abbey Road and all that stuff. I mean, everybody was talking about it. You know, the good news is that uh, we had nine previews. The word of mouth was great. Everybody's on pause, so it's a level playing field. You know, the show's not going to, all those shows are going to open. It's just whenever, whenever it is. And, uh, and actually in the, in this downtime, we've been working on it. We, the creative hit me and the creative team, him, myself, my music director, our director and choreographer zoom like this. And, you know, at least once a week and we keep tightening it up and making it better. Well, that's good. Yeah. But you think now, I mean, cause I'm worried about stand up comedy and you might, I mean, your tour was canceled today, right? Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, what is this like? What is? When are we going to get back to sitting that close to each other? Because let's be honest, the theater was not made for Americans. Now, the no. theater seats <laughs> were made for Americans. They were a little fucking little. Nineteen ten when they built them. Yeah. yeah. They, they, I, if I go to a theater, I literally apologize to the people to the right and the left immediately. I'm like, I'm sorry. I apologize. And then I hold my tits for an hour and a half <laughs> like this because the seats are just ridiculous. Now, I mean, it's going to be hard because you like at least the comedy club, they can spread the people out a little bit. In a theater, when are they going to be able to sit back? Are people going to come right back? Well, what's going to happen, you think? I think, I mean, two things. I think first we should all do a class action suit, everybody, and sue China. I'm doing that. I'm going to get Jacoby and Myers. Jacoby and, uh, and it's about I'm going to fucking sue them. It only costs 10 grand. It's good. Can I and, jump uh, in on yours and I'll give you half of my money? Sure. All right. Done. Done deal. I know Jacoby's. Maybe maybe we could, we could divide and conquer. We can get it for five grand. I haven't, uh, heard, that name. I haven't heard those names in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped and fell. You know, boom, Jacoby and Myers. Uh, but what I truly believe is I think this, the, this is the most money in the history of the planet and collectively that's throwing at medicine and science. And, you know, it's billions of dollars. I mean, look at like Rutgers in two weeks came up with a saliva test. You know, they're throwing all these collective minds. You know, they've already been, you know, they'll come up with a cure. It'll be the first thing that, you know, they can help people. Then they'll look at what the antibodies do and how long that can last. Then they'll have a vaccine. But I mean, the, you know, we put a fucking man on the moon, you know, uh, we can we can figure out a virus. And especially with, you know, before, like when somebody said a trillion dollars, it's like an evil scientist on a cartoon. Now, like we're throwing, you know, six trillion and they're putting so much money at all these great, brilliant minds in the world. Yeah. And I think it. I think they'll it, it'll happen. And I think it'll be sooner than later. But I still think we should shoot sue China. I think it's the right thing. to do. I'm in. I'm in. I'll uh, take I'll take some free Chinese food. Oh, here's you know what? Here's fucked up. I don't have the the, the so we I uh, a couple of nights ago, we got takeout from a Chinese food place just to maybe, you know, reverse the, the coronavirus in me. And um, and I, I opened up a fortune cookie and it's like, you know, learn Chinese. And the word was disease. <laughs> I swear to God. Did you keep that. You should have kept that. Fuck yeah. And you know what the word is? Bing. <laughs> Bing. Yeah. Bing. <laughs> That's that's you know what's that bat for disease you fuckers? Uh, <laughs> You've been binged. Oh, oh my god! Well, you want to take a what? Oh, yeah. that's hilarious! That's hilarious! Bing, Bing. disease, disease. They opened it Wait, up. My, what are you like? Got rid of those. Play those numbers. How funny! <laughs> <would> you, <laughs> if you played those numbers and you won more money, <laughs> I'm doing it. Now, let me ask you a question about because I have things. Now, you, 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 I went in your dressing room with the kid to wipe his bum bum. Right. And I noticed, and I always think about this. These are the little things I think about. All these clothes are back there. Now, do you, do they pick these for you? Do you go in and do a thing before the tour starts and you pick out all your little outfits and then, or do you wear the same thing every night or? Like, do they wash them? Do they smell? I mean, like, wh- like you're because li- you have little sparkly pants and your bum shines and then with the <laughs> and jackets and all that shit. I'm wondering because I see Jovi went from certain things. Now he wears these little jackets, these little tight jackets. And, you know, I mean, who picks out these clothes? Is it you? Are those your clothes? Do you get to keep them? What? <laughs> so let me so I- I'll give you the journey. So at the beginning, Right. You have to wear leather because you got to look. It's usually black leather. That's you got to look cool. Right. And you have no money. So and there's no wardrobe uh, personnel to wash anything. So I wore leather pants for I think we didn't have money till slippery. So they could stand up in the uh, they just stood up. (laughs) And the only time that they I would like first get onto them and I would like I couldn't even bend my knees. And then once I started to sweat, at least I could bend my knees a little bit. <laughs> and it just stunk like death. And um, <laughs> and then no underwear, got, right? No underwear back. No, then. no. You always got to go cowboy. You got to go. <laughs> rock and roll. Got to go rock and roll. Right. And then um, you got to see that junk, right? You got to see that. You got to see what you're packing from stage. Like let's exactly. Have Robert. I'm Blue. not embarrassed. I'm proud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, and then then we got a stylist like in the 80s. We got this guy that 
you know, because you couldn't then buy the shit. And you made us all the shit that you, I don't even, you, so he made us this expensive shit. Then we had a wardrobe girl, right. girls, and then they would wash that shit. And, you know, and now like we, we would get like designers to buy shit, put it into the road case. And then like when you get done with the show, you, you put your clothes on the floor and then magically it's hung up back in your case and clean and everything. It's unbelievable. It's great. So you wear the same outfit or you get five different outfits that you wear? I kind of bring like all the shit and I only wear the one fucking jacket. <laughs> uh, and I wear like a couple pairs of pants and like for Europe, it's fucking cold. You know, like summer there is like 40 and raining. So, uh, you know, that's like an English summer. So you always need fucking something warm because you're freezing your balls off. Because I have show shirts, I mean, I and I have pants. Like, and I, I just realized that, like, I haven't worn my show pants. <laughs> like a you know, but my show pants are like stretchy fat guy jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I got you got to have the stretch. Hey, listen, I got the stretch. You know, because you know you gotta. Yeah, you gotta have stretch. You, gotta move. you have to free willy. You know. I used to have regular jeans and I'd be on stage and my, my thigh would sweat and then my jeans would get stuck and I'd go to bend down and I almost, uh, you know, slip my fucking hip out. Because <laughs> women have stretchy pants for 30 fucking years and then I found out they make guys stretchy pants. I put those suckers on. I could squat down, pick up a nickel with my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had nickels right now. <laughs> I had uh, I wore this one on the whole last tour, which is now, you know, we used to do like 110 shows and do like 50 countries or something. And then a couple years ago, we were like, OK, we're going to do that over three years. Yeah. So, so we just wanted to goes now 10 years older than me. He's like, everything hurts. Let's I don't want to play that much. So um. We slowed it down and I brought I bought the most expensive jacket I ever bought, like real alligator in, in uh, Italy, real, you know, so it's like 15 grand. You know, I was like, I'm fucking doing it right. And you uh, and you can't write it off, you know, for the taxes. I'm a Jew. So you can't write this thing off because they're like, well, how do we know it's not civilian wear? Right. So I wore every fucking show, 100 fucking shows. Uh, right. And I'm, and I like take a fucking picture and I'm going to put that when they audit me every fucking year. I'm going to have a hundred fucking <laughs> fucking Polaroids stapled to the fucking receipt. <laughs> you did not wear that to the shop right ever. You only no, wore it on stage. Yeah. I just brought it home after the last of the fucking, the last of that fucking tour. The, uh, this house is not for sale, but the jacket is came right home. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny when you say I'm a Jew, because when you think of rock bands as a kid, you don't think of, Catholic, Jew, uh, you don't think of any you, rock, rock guys are something else. They're like, you're like another. And then when you go, dude, I'm a Jew. I'm like, what? Mm. Like, <laughs> you're like, That's the comedy. That's the shtick, you know? And, yeah. and if you even think about it too, it's like the most, almost every keyboard player is Jewish because their parents have the money for lessons. <laughs> crazy. Everybody else had a fucking tennis racket in the mirror. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that's because you have no fucking money. We had enough money. We were rich, but we were a fucking tennis racket in the mirror. What what song brings you the most money now? Publishing wise. Oh, I mean, oh, we have there's some. But luckily, I mean, knock on fucking wood, we got a lot of records out, and it's streaming is you know it's a great thing. I had I had D Snyder in the studio not so long ago, and he said that the two most played songs in movies and commercials were two Twisted Sister songs, the only two that they really have. And that they they and and I thought that I thought for sure a Bon Jovi song because you hear oh, you yeah. hear you give love a bad name and fucking everything. It's my life. You give love a bad name. Want it dead or alive? It's my life. Yeah. I mean that's like there's and they're remixes it and people are singing it like it's fucking yesterday. It's like unbelievable. What's that's the, my, what's what? the worst song you don't like playing? So we never play on the first record was uh, she don't know me. So it was, it's the uh, one video where I was hacking, not acting. And uh, it was terrible. The song was terrible. It was the first one that John agreed to that. He didn't, that we didn't write at all. And, um, and John will never do it. We can't even mention it around him. Really? I'll, I'll probably get uh, a phone call, a text now. Even he just heard it through the airwaves. Yeah. What, uh, what do you love to play? Oh, my God, I got it. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, dude, the video is the best. Is that the one with the, there's some dialogue with John, man? You sold us out. 
Jeez, remember, remember vi music videos? Why were they all cheesy? Nothing was cheesier than Billy Squire's video, though. Remember that video? Yeah, wearing the pink uh, sus uh, suspenders and, uh, Oof. and, and uh, crawling on the floor. Yeah, that killed his Oof. career. That killed it, man. And he was great. He was, he's unbelievable. He's fucking unbelievable. Billy, Billy Squire had so many hits, and he's fucking a great lead guy. Guitarist. The stroke, the stroke was unbelievable. Bobby Chouinard on drums, they were great. Fucking awesome. Where's he from, Long Island? I think so. Yeah. It's so funny because, you know, rock people, I have a theory that rock, all rock guys are just nerds. Yeah. Right? I've told you that. I yeah. think rock guys, you take away the hair, right? It's just thin dudes that are really smart. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've never seen an oof like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some street punk from Boston fucking in a band. No, you, it's like you guys, you took the time when you were younger to fucking learn a craft. And then sure. at, at some point you went and got the mo I mean, just millions of dollars worth of pussy. Sorry, Gabby. I keep forgetting you're here. No, I know. I meant millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great, man. Uh, right. it's, it's a, I'm a pretty fucking lucky guy. It's fortunate. And I beat the corona. So yeah, at least it didn't take me down. Corona. I was so nervous when you got it, man. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. This I was too, right? At the beginning, like, I'm sick. I'm like, he goes, you got it. I'm like, fuck. You know, I, was so, I, 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 I hung up. The, we got off the podcast that night, and I was just sitting there, and I was like, I really would love to get him on the show tomorrow, but I don't. I was afraid to ask everybody, so I text Robert. I'm like, Do you think that? Yeah, and Bobby's like, I got it, I got it. And Gabby's like, Oh yeah, no problem. Here's his phone number. Call him tomorrow. I was like, What the fuck is happening right now? And then <laughs> you were so cool, and people loved hearing from you because you were, you know, you sounded really sick, but you also were on the men's, and I think that was positive for everybody. That's what I wanted to do right at the beginning. Like I said, I got it. I just. You know, wanted to like calm the fear because, you know, I was scared. Everybody's scared, but it's like, you know, there's not like not everybody's dying. It's not the plague. There are people die. I mean, it's so fucking sad the people that died, but it's not everybody dies. Yeah. You know, yes, but you just don't sentence. want to be the one. Yeah. You know, death sentence and you're healthy. Thank God. You know, if I got it, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> right. Oh, look at oh. this. Oh, who's oh. coming in now? I mean, why would you come in now? You said Did seven o'clock. You said seven o'clock. Should you get on? We should sign off. Yeah, I'm looking at your text. It's just seven o'clock. Put your video I on. Oh, hold on. Yeah, so we can see what headband you're wearing. Today. I <laughs> told, I told Rich seven. Yeah, you but said seven. Would be done. But we had, we're almost, we're done. I but you know what, though, the good thing. How you doing, boss? Hi, Dave. The good thing is you're 15 minutes early. Well, the thing is, I thought he was doing his other podcast. How did you get the thing? I thought this was your YKW pod. I thought this was your other podcast, not I the one with Mal Mike. I fucked up. I told. <laughs> yeah, you did. I, I told. I told Mike, but Mike, Mike's no longer here. I don't. I don't think he works for me anymore. I think. Uh, I think my mushy Mike's gone. I think why? Because you you yelled him. No, he he. I don't. I don't. Did I yell, Mike? No, it wasn't a lot of yelling. No. He was he was extra mushy tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah I don't know. That's, if you know, that's, I, that's <laughs> mashed potatoes and mashed potatoes. Calling somebody else mushy. <laughs> <laughs> well, boss, we got to go. It was good seeing you. No, no. You still have 15 minutes. <laughs> 17. I want to talk to Dave. You look great. Why don't you call him? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Thank you, boss. I, I, listen, man, it's great. I fucking survived. We were saying, I was saying before, like, so I inspected uh, my wife and uh, five other friends because I'm a giver. Uh-huh. And uh, so we all got the corona. Only two of us, me and my buddy Manzo, we got sick. Everybody else was like, no symptoms. So then Sunday, I got the test back negative. Manzo got his test back negative. Everybody's got their test back. So I'm like, okay, I go, I, at least I could do is, and we can't give it to each other anymore because we fucking had it. So uh, I said, let me at least buy you dinner. I almost killed you. And um, <laughs> we came, uh, he came over to the house on Sunday. 
had food, drank really good wine, drank till three o'clock in the fucking morning. And I'm like, can you believe this? I go, there's seven billion humans out there. Everybody's so afraid of getting the shit. And we fucking, us three here, we beat it. It's crazy. You I've beat it, though, it. because uh, of shit you did in Tokyo back in the 80s. Yeah, you go. What do you say? You always say make the body an inhabitable place for disease. For germs. Yeah. I mean, I, I would think the 80s alone, I wouldn't even. L- listen, th- I got sick on that Sunday. That Saturday, I party with Manzo till about four in the morning. I woke up with such a fucking hangover. I was dying. And then I went right into Corona. So I fucking was like, what? Like that should have beat it. I remember the first when AIDS first came out and I went and I took the test and the guy said negative and I was so happy I wanted to kiss him, but he looked like he had it. <laughs> uh, I was so happy. Uh, I think I have it for like over for about six weeks now. AIDS? Uh, yeah. <laughs> for about six weeks now, it's every now and then it's hard to breathe, but I have anxiety. So that, that uh, stimulates my breathing, I think, or... I don't know. I take my temperature all day. How do you know? How will you know if you have it without taking the test? So that's a crazy thing. Like, look at my. So here in my little control group, right? Out of seven of us, five people had no symptoms. They would have never known and infected like everybody. Once I got to and two of us got sick. So I once I tested positive, everybody tested. But like, that's what's so crazy. It's probably like 60 percent of America probably had it and uh and it's asymptomatic so do that'll you, be oh i'm sorry no so that'll and, be a good thing to get us out of this shit do you and gabby ever argue who has less pigment between both of you <laughs> do you ever have that argument that's the <laughs> easy, <laughs> really wonderful like, yeah. listen where that's what gap go go that's the wonderful Eastern European skin that I'm rocking here. You guys really, you guys look like elves. You look like, you look like a house full of nightlights. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, what do you think happens in Poland and, and the Czech Republic? There's no fucking sun. <laughs> uh, Italians Italian are like, whoa, I got sun to death, you know, you, Spain. You look like Gabby in 20 years. <laughs> you want tea. Hey, so you, if I, Say my breathing's been bad for six weeks, oh, on and off. He's not a doctor. He's not a doctor. I, I don't care. I'm going by his experience, okay? I went to pre-med. I'm good. So for say, two months. But if two I'm years. Not, which in six weeks, I, it's not going to get any worse if I had it. it. Would only, you know. I mean, I work out every day. I do lawn work, and uh, I, it's all anxiety. You don't do lawn work. You move dirt from one pile to around a tree. Listen to me on the verge of a mustache. I fucking... <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to grow a Hitler one. <laughs> I, I do a lot of landscaping. You, and- boss, I've seen your video. You you literally... He does... Dave, he goes, his uh, landscaping with Voss videos, he has like an intro, and then he goes, yeah, I'm going to take this dirt from over here and put it around this tree. That's not landscaping. That's manual labor, you asshole. No, I, but I, I oh, my grass is oh, starting wait, to come up. Arms. My, Everybody's my, grass is coming up. No, no, the new <laughs> stuff I planted. You can tell it's new grass. It's not, you You planted grass. You threw, you went like this and you threw grass. Yes, in. no, I went, I, I found, I went like this, see which way the wind's blowing. And then <laughs> you throw it and the wind takes it. Nice and lovely. I don't know if that's planting. That's uh, that's Throwing. spreading it out. Well, yes. but I planted flowers too. Look at my front I yard. Can't. I planted but flowers. To answer you, uh, no, you wouldn't have had. I mean, some yeah. people get like loss of uh, taste and smell. Yeah, no. But I mean, if you have it, or you have no symptoms, or you have, I mean, you'll have a fever, and then you feel like you got. I mean, my first five days was like a fucking flu of doom. Every fucking joint was fucking killing me. Oh. Write this down. <laughs> oh, I, right now. I hope you have it. Uh, 98.4. Uh, You're fine. Yeah. I take my temperature three or four or five times a day. Five times? I, w- I wish yes. you with a gun. <laughs> 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 I, I try to buy a flamethrower, but they're all sold out. From where? From uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. 
his company sold flamethrowers. What are you going to do with the flamethrower? Are you going to burn somebody's eyebrows off? <laughs> if, if they come at you and you shoot a flame at them, they're turning around, pal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> J- J- stop, drop, and roll, I think, is the... Uh... Dave, Dave do, you have, do you have home protection? Yes, we have a 10-pound Jack Russell uh, terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but she would bite the fucking crap out of everything. Uh, so you wouldn't use a flamethrower to protect your house? No, I got a I got a twelve gauge. That'll definitely. Uh, oh, I can't get one. Yeah, why? you know why? Well, I have I'm a felon. Well, no, I'm not a felon, but they they put a halt on gun buying in New Jersey, and with my mental history, it might be a little tough. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you're fucking taking your temperature every five seconds you think you have it and you have Why anxiety not? issues yeah and they'll give you a flamethrower <laughs> is that <I'll>, better <laughs> <laughs> i uh i have crossbows i'm waiting for my good crossbow to come in the mail but what's the difference between a bad Listen, one and a good a one? Bad no, one's no. it hurts you no i have the crossbow gun right here that's the pistol crossbow but i'm waiting for the big crossbow <laughs> Listen, that'll, that's good enough. You don't need no fucking gun, man. That's, uh, that'll why, do it. Why, why, are you fighting, why are you fighting robbers like you're Robin Hood? <laughs> <laughs> We've advanced so much further than the bow. Why <laughs> Why the fuck? What are you? Are you, <laughs> are you going to buy Little John and, and protect the woods around? Have a bucket of stones and just stone people? Stone them? Yeah, why don't, you get a, why don't you get a slingshot too, Voss? I got one. I got one. <laughs> and I bought a thousand uh, BBs for what? Thousand, in case I end up in the woods and and I don't and I'm out hunting squirrel or whatever. I can I don't need a bow and arrow. I could do it with my slingshot. Dave, what what? I know that I have a plan, and I know Voss has a plan, and I know Mike has a plan. What now? The end of the world comes. This thing goes crazy. Apocalypse. What 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 is your plan? I'm staying put and uh, and and get all the fucking guns out and just shoot till there's no tomorrow. And Gabby's got to come home, right? She'll come home. I'll pay all the fucking uh, my my town. I'll give all the cops the money. Hire the cops. That's good. Hire the cops. Kill my two siblings just to get that over with because no dead weight. And then Jesus, Gabby. And then we, um, yeah. And then we all have posts. Now, let me ask a question, Dave. If Voss knocked on your gate one day and was like, <laughs> let me in, would you, yeah. in the apocalypse, would you let him in? Probably would I, I, would, I let him in. He, 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 cause he's, he's, you know, he's got the apocalypse. He's got the apocalypse bag. He'll have like ready to eat meals and all that kind of shit with him. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I'd, yeah. Love him. I'd club him to death. Like and, and plus, I could be one of Gabby's five people that she has to bring in to get in. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that an apocalypse uh, minion <laughs> she's a bringer of apocalypse <laughs> I like it apocalypse minion hey, I want to go fishing I got to find a place I can go fishing around here oh, uh, I where I live <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go on a boat <laughs> why, what do you, why are you we have, we have David Bryan's here and you're just rattling on like he's fucking Mike Feeney I gotta I, go fishing Who yeah fish? maybe he fishes and he wants me to go he doesn't fish he buys fish yeah, so could I, but I, I want to go. Gonna, he's going to go fishing in $500 jeans <laughs> <laughs> he's a composer Boss, you have your rings on no, I put them all in the uh, safety deposit box. All my rings and my good watch. I got my Swiss Army on. Why is that? I don't want to end up in the woods with, with extra uh, valuables where people can come at me. Yeah. And my, my old landscaper, he was looking at my, and, you know, my old landscaper was looking at my rings and my watch. And I'm going, you know what? I don't know this guy. I don't want to walk in one night and three of his friends are out there waiting for me. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what I'm saying. Fuck, are you worried about that? Your your lawn crew is gonna mug you at night. His crew, I don't know. He could be MS13 for all I know. <laughs> so what you're saying? He's Spanish? No, I didn't say that. I said no. He's MS13. It's Dad, don't say anything. This is not a conversation for you. Let yes, us. Dad, that. don't step into this. Listen to me, Voss. First of all, you, I would think you would wear your rings 
everywhere because your desire is to use your weapons on somebody, your, your flamethrower, your crossbow. Isn't that your dream? My, no, well, yes, but I, that's why I have a wife and kid. <laughs> to practice. <laughs> uh, you got to see the cute little baby antlers I bought Raina. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. I thought M M did that M Mush sent you the thing earlier, right? Yes, I saw it at like 7:15. But I was relaxing in bed. I go, oh, he must be doing his regular podcast, and then he'll do the one with Mike at at seven. I fucked up. That was that's I all right. I said to you seven, but it's five thirty, and he sent it to you at five. Well, look, I got to see Dave. He's healthy. You know, that's all that matters. I could see uh, you and uh, uh, Calta, you know, anytime. Uh, but when do you get, you know, two big acts like, oh, oh, when is he? Oh, guess what? So I finished that show, uh, City on a Hill, which is the best. You have to watch this. What's it on? It's it only goes. It's on Amazon Prime till the end of the month. It's 10 episodes. And Kevin Bacon. Wow, my dad doesn't care. Yeah, you're no, right. no, no, no. Just uh, my, uh, my security is okay. Hold on. Uh, city on a hill. City. Oh, look at that. It looks it, exactly it, like you, Rich. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Same size. Uh, so, uh, you, you know what? You, you can be all wise and happy now, but let me tell you, we'll be back in the clubs and you'll be introing <laughs> me again, okay? And, and Rich, I can't wait. Yes. And maybe you'll do some of that crowd work. Anyhow. <laughs> you, you stop. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm only kidding. So anyhow, I wrote on Twitter, uh, must see City on the Hill. Great. You know, Kevin Bacon was great. The whole cast. Kevin, Bank Kevin Bacon thanked me on Twitter. Whoa. Whoa. Isn't that his, what? Huh? For what? For plugging his, his show, saying how good he was. Why do you see if he wants to go fishing? Kevin Bacon follows you on Twitter? He didn't follow me. He thanked me. How did I, he know? But how does he know? How does he even see your shit? I wrote at Kevin Bacon. At Kevin Bacon. So you're, I go, fishing. you're fishing for you're a response. for a fucking compliment. No, a follow, you fucking idiot. I get enough yeah, compliments. I, I can do the same thing. You, you put the person's name in and you're fishing for a like. You're fishing. No, no, listen to me. You're, he loves I, fishing. Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I personally love the show and I thought he was great. He's, he should win an Emmy. If you watch the show, Bobby, you won't stop because what? it's all based on Boston and Charlestown and Quincy and all those places. What's it called? City on a Hill? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, 10 episodes. You have to watch it. All right, so all right. I just said he was great in it, and he said, thank you. You know, I like to, you know, uh, listen, I, uh, if somebody's good at something, I, I compliment them. That's all. Did you see uh, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with the, the end flamethrower scene? Yeah. Oh, how great was that? Yeah. yeah that I, did the trick. I want one of those so bad, a flamethrower. I love, I love, fuck the flamethrower. I love when he threw the dog food at her face, the can of dog food, and it just smashed her nose. Oh, that okay. end was so fucking violent and cool. I know. Oh, it was so great. So, the same with the, did you see the end of Ozark? No, none of us did. You didn't see Ozark? I, I'll repeat it again. Ask me one more time. If I throw Norton, is that like a flamethrower? <laughs> <laughs> Winding down fast. You didn't oh. see uh, Ozark. I didn't even know you were still here. What's up, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> He's been mean to me on every, and I've been totally nice to him. I, I would he, not say. I would not say that. A little mean. Oh, a little me? mean. A little bit. Yeah, and then you know you are because when you sing your sentences, that's when you know you're lying. Me. Yeah. <laughs> And that was out of tune, right, David? Was it a little out of tune? Me. Yeah. We can autocorrect. All right, listen, Dave, we're going to let you go. I Thank you so much for hanging out. Voss, I fucked up. I'll take the hit. I apologize. No and big Voss deal. Voss was looking for, he was so excited about doing this with you. <laughs> I mean, he, he loved, you guys have like a man crush. It kind of bugs me. No, I'm just, I'm a fan. Uh, I, I, you know, <laughs> There's talent throughout his family, and they're right next to each other right here on the screen. The Brady Bunch. Why you shit on her every other opportunity you get? Now her father's here, and you got to... No, no, 
I'm a big fan. I've we we've helped her out as much as we possibly can <laughs> for as much as you know, she you know what I'm saying? Bonnie Bonnie uses her a lot on on the movies and the TV shows and uh, uh you know, listen, I we've always helped young comics. Bobby has, I have uh, Bonnie has, Colin has. You can't keep what you have in life unless you give it away. I love you guys. Yeah, especially Corona. Right, <laughs> That's why I'm the giver, exactly. I right, listen, Dave, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yes. Yes, we'll do it again, boss. We'll do it again. So, uh, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll get, it, get the time right. Next time right. we'll do it again. Just hang out. We'll, we won't, we'll just fuck around and have a good time, man. We'll go yeah, we all got nothing to do and nowhere to go. So it's the good news. Yeah, next time we'll do it out without Gabby and we can talk some more, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand. Back Maybe you don't 80s. understand that I'm actually the middleman. So this won't be happening if I'm here, okay? I'm kind of the PR person for the situation. So I will be here, but nice try. You don't want to hear about buttholes, though. <laughs> How's your new boyfriend? How's your new boyfriend, Gabby? He's good. Does your father, has your father met him? He met him last night. Does really? Like- what do you oh. think, Dave? He's really cool. Nice is guy. He- is that the tattoo guy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. I liked him too. I got him on the Instagram. He's a nice guy. I, I like him too. I'm not a fan. You don't like him? Oh, Plug your Instagram, Gab. What? Plug your Instagram. At Gabby is Brian is my Instagram. And my dad is on Instagram, David Brian Music. Diana will be back whenever Broadway reopens. Yes, Download yes. a Bon Jovi song. Why not? Um, also, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash unabashed for all my podcasts. That's also available everywhere and video content, etc. Yeah, Dave, Dave, Dave's in a band. <laughs> yeah, Dad, show your merch. Yeah, she's see your merch. Where can we buy merch? Hold on. Me and my dad also eventually will be starting a podcast radio show. There you go. Is that? Oh, that's old school, buddy. Got a mouse pad? Yeah, because my fucking track wall fucked up. So I got a mouse like from the 80s. I had to go into a time machine to buy it. And luckily, I had one of these fucking stupid things. Mm-hmm. That was a good album. That was bad. Was that Bad Medicine? No, that's Have a Nice Day. Oh, Have Come a Nice on, Day. Uh, Sorry. You're, um, hurting, you're hurting me. Why? Bad Medicine, New Jersey. 1989. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, Voss, what do you have besides fucking uh, hepatitis? <laughs> Voss roast is free on YouTube. The best roast you'll ever see. I'm not real. I mean, you could buy any one of my six CDs on, on iTunes. My last one is when I saw Hamilton. But go to Voss roast. Watch a free roast. You'll love it. And uh, listen, support uh, Bobby and everybody else that you can support. In your yeah. uh, you hey, don't you, I don't. Uh, I don't even know. Mike left, so I don't even know <laughs> where this is going. The producer of the show quit during the beginning <laughs> of the show, so I don't even. Know, I know it's recording because I hit record. It will be on my computer, and I will find a way to get this up on Patreon if this does not not go on Patreon. But I don't even know how to shut the live stream off. So. I what Gab? Do you know how to do it, Gab? You're gonna do because you're the host. When you yep. click leave meeting, you end meeting for every. And we all go poof. And then make sure it's you save that yep. recording to your computer. We'll work it out uh, after the end. But I want to say thank you, David, Mike, Calta. Okay. Every morning, uh, Mike Calta show in Tampa on the Bone. Uh, he's number one best friend, and uh, and uh, I want to thank all the Patreon people and all the people on YouTube and all the fans of YKWD, the best fans. We'll see you next week. You know what, dude? Bye. All right. So long, you guys. See yeah. ya, Rich. All right. Hit it, Bobby. Okay, so now, Gabby, I stopped recording. Right. And now I go where? <laughs> now you're going to do leave meeting. Bottom right. Meeting. End meeting, you mean? Sure. End meeting. Thanks, end buddy. Meeting. It's end meeting for you. It's leave meeting. Thank Bye, you. Dad. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much. Click <laughs> it. All right, Probably goodbye. Like it. Hang on, I gotta stop the live stream first. <laughs> what happened to Mush? He, I don't know. He left. So it was streaming. <laughs> it's streaming live on. Uh, Hi. It's under Calta and Kelly, though. What does that mean? 
it's not under YKWD and there's no, like when you click on this, when it says live from YouTube, yeah. click the down arrow and it says view stream on YouTube and you click that and it brings you to the stream and it says Kalta and Kelly four, six. I don't know. I don't know what he did. I don't know. Who knows what he did? He left and he wouldn't answer my phone call. I went to call him. Stop live stream, view stream on YouTube. Okay, so here you go. Guys need to know. All right, hang on one second, Gab. It's the fear of its Our lawnmower three. Oh, we got fucking commercials and shit. My uh, brother was trying to look for it on Patreon, and he couldn't find it. Hang on one second, Gab. Yeah, I might have to load it later. All right, there we go. Um, all right, we're, we're still live. I'm going to cancel it right now. All right, I'll see you later, Mike. Let me call you in a sec, okay?